Welcome to the Mount Sinai Missionary Baptist Church of Memphis Incorporated YouTube channel. And thank you so much for joining us once again. Let us pray. Our Heavenly Father, thank you for always wanting to be with us and even making a way out of no way for us to be with you. Thank you for your son that tore down the wall that separates us from you. And we pray now that you would use your word uh, to teach us the importance of worshiping you and how uh, our gift to you uh, or what we bring as form of as a form of sacrifice is connected to our worship of you. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Our text for today is found in the book of Genesis chapter 4 verse 1 through 8. I'm reading from the New American Standard Version. That's Genesis chapter 4 verse 1 through 8. And it reads, Now the man had relations with his wife Eve, and she conceived and gave birth to Cain. And she said, I have gotten a man child with the help of the Lord. Again, she gave birth to his brother Abel, and Abel was a keeper of flocks, but Cain was a tiller of the ground. So it came about in the course of time that Cain brought an offering to the Lord of the fruit of the ground. Abel, on his part, also brought of the firstling of his flock and of their fat portion. And the Lord had regard for Abel and his offering. But Cain and his offering, he had no regard. So Cain became very angry and his countenance fell. And then the Lord said to Cain, why are you so angry? And why has your countenance fallen? If you do well, will you not will not your countenance be lifted up? And if you do not do well, sin is crouching at the door, and its desire is for you. But you must master it. Cain told Abel about uh, his Abel his brother, and it came about when they were in the field that Cain rose up against Abel his brother, and killed him. For our subject today, I want to talk about Abel and faith worshiping. Abel and faith worshiping. Now, uh, next week, we're going to talk about Enoch and faith walking. He walked with God. And then the week after that, the Lord's will, we're going to talk about uh, Noah and faith walking working. So uh, we're dealing with, first of all, Abel this week, Enoch next week, and week after next, Noah. And then uh, each of those characters, uh, Abel, we're going to deal with faith worshiping, and Enoch, faith walking, and then Noah, faith working. The text centers around the offering of two individuals that were offered to God and they happen to be brothers. It is my belief based upon our actions, even the actions of believers, that we feel as though God needs something from us. We act as though we are providing something to God that he needs when we bring our tithes and offerings. Our offerings whatever they might be, are not to be based upon necessities. Our offerings should be based upon requirements. God requires that we return a portion to him of that which he has given to us, not because he needs it, but because we need it. That's another sermon in, 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 in God. Uh, meeting our needs and how he does it. And a lot of times we spend all we got instead of putting something aside for a rainy day, as we say. God stores in his storehouse for our needs and distributes to out of his storehouse to us based upon his perception or his knowledge 
of our needs being met based upon the requirements that he has set. Now, God provides for us based upon our legitimate needs, whatever they might be. He don't just hand out because we ask for it. The 50th number of Psalms, verse 12, states that if I were hungry, I would not tell you, for the world and its fullness are mine. That's the English Standard Version. Now let's take a stroll through the text. The background story, uh, as we can tell, is found in uh, Genesis chapter 4, verses uh, 1 through 10, but we only read through verse 8. Abel was a righteous man because of his faith and based upon Matthew's uh, chapter 23, verse 35, that bears that out. God had revealed to Adam and his descendants the true way of worship, and Abel obeyed God by faith. Remember last week, it's impossible to please God without faith. Whatever we bring God must be packaged in faith. In fact, Abel's obedience cost him his death, or his life rather. He gave up his life because of his gift or his sacrifice to God, his offering to God. Now, Paul reminds us of someone else whose obedience costed him his life. In Philippians chapter 2, verse 8, it reads, And being found in fashion as a man, he humbled himself and became obedient unto death, even the death of the cross. Cain was not a child of God based upon the statement in 1 John chapter 3, verse 12, because he did not have faith. He was religious, but not righteous. A lot of people are religious, but not righteous. And I'm not talking about those that hang out on the corner. I'm talking about on Sunday morning, a, a Wednesday night midweek service or a, a Bible study, you have some that are religious, but not righteous. I'm just saying. Abel speaks to us today as the first martyr of faith, the first one that was killed because of his faith. Now let's let, let's this, let's look at the worshiper. Adam and Eve had learned to worship God during those wonderful days in the Garden of Eden before sin had brought uh, its curse to their lives and to the ground. Now, certainly, they taught their children about the Lord and the importance of worshiping him. Many Christians would do well to learn the difference between teaching and and enforcing. We spend too much time enforcing instead of teaching. We teach and God enforces or gives the increase. Workers need to be worshipers or they may become idolaters or idol worshipers because they are focusing on the gift and not the giver and forgetting that God gives the power to work and to gain wealth. God gives us the power to roll out of bed Monday uh, through Friday or however, whatever our work week is like and go to work. He gives us that power. If he took his air away from us, just uh, remove the ability of our hearts to beat, forget work. 
But God gives us the power to work and in that to gain wealth based upon the statement in Deuteronomy chapter 8, uh, verses 10 through 20. When God clothed Adam and Eve with the skin of animals in chapter 3, verse 21, just because he taught them about sacrifice and the shedding of blood, and they would have passed this truth along to their children. It's important that we train up our children in the way to, that they should go so that when they're old, they'll have a foundation to come back to. True worship is something we must learn from God himself. For he alone has the right to lay down the rules for approaching him and pleasing him in our worship of him. God accepted Abel and his sacrifice, but he rejected Cain and his sacrifice. And we must remember that we are attached to our sacrificial offering. Cain wasn't rejected because of his offering, but his offering was rejected because of Cain's attitude. His heart wasn't right with God. It was by faith that Abel's offered uh, a more acceptable sacrifice than Cain, according to uh, Hebrews chapter 11, verse 4, which means he had faith in God and was right with God. In later, later years, the law of Moses prescribed offering for grain and fruit in Leviticus chapter 2, in Deuteronomy chapter 26, verse 1 through 11. So we have reason to believe that Cain's sacrifice was acceptable and met the prescribed things that God asked for. And we must remember, just let me say this here, we must remember that, that, that obedience is better than sacrifice in this day and age. Obedience is better than sacrifice. Now, even if Cain brought an animal sacrifice and shed their blood, they wouldn't have been acceptable by God because of the state of Cain's heart. Psalms 51 and verse 17 states that the sacrifices of God are a broken spirit, a broken spirit and a contrite heart, O oh God, you will not despise. That's the New American Standard Version. A broken spirit means to burst forth like giving birth. Everything in our heart just burst out. A lot of times we want just the good to come out. But when we've got a broken spirit, all of the wrong, the good, the bad, the ugly, everything just burst out. Have you ever been talking to an individual and what's in them just burst out? And you wonder where did all of that come from? I just said, hey, how you doing? And all of that came from somewhere. That's a, a broken spirit. It's just coming out. They needed to get that out. Uh, what's being covered or hidden, God wants us to let it out, especially to him. A contrite heart means to collapse under the weight of. The weight of our problem should force us into a posture of worship. The weight of our sins and our troubles should cause us to collapse because of the heavy load that we're carrying. Matthews chapter 11, verse 
20, uh, and let me say this before we go to Matthews. Uh, what Jesus does for us on Calvary, he carries our load and he bears our load, the load of our sins, and he offers them on his body as a living sacrifice. The weight of our sins, when he was carrying that cross, and, 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 and his knee gave way. And, 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 and they called a brother to carry the cross for him. That ought to remind us of the need that we have to bear one another's burdens. Now let's go to Matthew chapter 11, verse 29 and 30, I believe it is. Uh, it says, take my yoke upon you. This is Jesus talking to each of us. Take my yoke upon you and learn from me. For I am gentle and lowly in heart and you will find rest for your souls. For my yoke is easy and my burdens are light. And Jesus carried our heavy load. And the heavy loads that we still find ourselves with, we can take them to the Lord in prayer because he cares for us. Abel brought the best that he had and truly sought to please God, but Cain didn't have that attitude of faith. Behold, to obey is better than sacrifice. To heed than the fat of the ram, according to 1 Samuel chapter 15. The fact that people attend worship or religious meetings and participate in church activities is no proof that they're true worshipers. It's possible to have a form of godliness, but never experience its saving power. Second Timothy chapter three, verse two through five, the English Standard Version says, for people will be lovers of self, lovers of money, proud, arrogant, abusive, disobedient to their parents, ungrateful, unholy, heartless, unacceptable, un unappeasable, slanderous, without self-control, brutal, not loving good, treacherous, reckless, swollen with conceit, lovers of pleasure rather than lovers of God. And here it is, having the appearance of godliness, but denying its power. And we are encouraged to avoid such people. These people, God says, come near to me with their mouth and honor me with their lips, but their hearts are far from me. The most expensive sacrifices are part without the submission of the heart can never make the worshiper right with God. No matter how expensive your gift is, how precious you might think it is, if your heart is not right with God, it will not please him. The way of Cain, according to Jude verse 11, is the way of self-willed and unbelief. When God rejected his offering, Cain became very angry. The Hebrew word for very, for very implies that he was burning with anger. God spoke to him personally and tried to lead him back to the way of faith, but Cain resisted. It's just like the Lord to give us another opportunity to obey him. 
And it's just like stubborn sinners to refuse his help. The Lord warned Cain that temptation was like a fierce beast crouching at the door of his heart. And he had better not open that door. That warning is the same for us today. Sin lies at the door of our heart just waiting for an opportunity to gain interest to cause our lives to be useless to Jesus and ourselves and others. It's dangerous to carry a grudge or harbor bitter feelings in our hearts because all of this can be used by Satan to lead us into temptation and sin. This is what Paul meant when he wrote, neither give place to the devil in Ephesians chapter 4, verse 27. If we aren't careful, we can be tempted ourselves or we can tempt ourselves and bring about our own ruin and destruction. But God gave us another chance. And each time we look at Calvary and see his son giving his life for us, he's giving us another chance. Each time we remember the sacrifice offering by Jesus and the blood that flowed from Emmanuel's vein and sinners can plunge beneath and lose their guilty stain, we're remembering that we've been given another chance. On a Friday, long time ago, on a hill called Calvary, on an old rugged cross, Jesus hung, bled, and he died. But early the third day morning, he got up with all power in heaven and in earth in his hands, power to lift up a bowed down head, power to mend broken hearts. Abel has given us a great lesson in worshiping by giving, and that our offering, or we are attached to our gift. Let us pray. Thank you, Lord, for teaching us the value of worshiping through giving. We pray now that you would give us continued clarity that we can be more than hearers, but that we can apply it to our daily livings. As situations occur in our lives, that we can give with a pure heart. We can give the way you give to us, no strings attached. Help us to obey you and to follow the things that you instruct us to do to have a right relationship with you and not go after those things that separate us from you. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. That's it for today. Be blessed and be a blessing and stay safe. Until next time, so long.